Welcome everybody to How Fast Will It Go and today we're dealing with the 1971 Porsche number 23 917 slash 20 now it has 1,203 horsepower 831 pounds feet of torque from a 5.4 litre twin turbocharged flat 12 engine and the vehicle itself now weighs 2,119 pounds now it has all wheel drive and it can do a 0 to 60 time in an astonishing time of 1.385 seconds and going to 100 mile an hour in 2.714 seconds so yeah ludicrously quick in terms of acceleration and uh, even back in the day this was a really rather quick car in terms of top speed I've seen uh, apparent reports that it could get up to around 240 miles an hour which if it could do that in its stop form then uh, yeah that, that wouldn't even put it at the bottom of the leaderboard on this series so yeah with uh, extra power and even less in terms of weight let's uh, see what this uh, 70s race car can do So yeah, this is actually the first car from the 70s that we've actually had on this series. So uh, let's see if this uh, car can put a good showing for a decade that we really haven't represented. There's 230. There's 240. 250. 260. 265. 268. Oh, are we calling that 269 because it was bouncing all over the place? Oh dear, oh dear, lost control. Yeah, the bad thing about this car is that once you lose control with it, it's very hard to get back. But yeah, we've at least done 268. I'm not quite sure if it's done 269 because it was bouncing between that and 268. So uh, yeah, we'll uh, try and see if we can get back up to that speed again and see if we can hold 269. Otherwise, I'm probably going to call it 268 otherwise. But yeah, let's oh, hit a massive lorry somehow and uh, yeah, let's get around this roundabout and see if we what we can do on the other side of the motorway. But yeah, no doubting that this car is hugely fast and uh, yeah, definitely putting a good show in for the uh, 70s considering we've yet to have a car on this series from there. Maybe I should look at more from that decade but nonetheless, let's see what we can do. really good in terms of acceleration. Even somewhat at the top end despite not having quite as much torque as I would like from a uh, car in this series because the more torque the easier it is to get a higher top speed because as we all know the higher top speed you go in the uh, more difficult it is to continue gaining speed due to aerodynamics. Managed 260 ish there. That corner, as per usual, screws us over. Decided to keep the original engine in this purely because it's something that we're never really going to be able to use in other cars. There's not very many vehicles on this series, on this game, even that have flat 12 engines. The only other one I can think of is the Ferrari uh, 512 TR. We recently reviewed. I think actually the car to try out in this series. But yeah, looking at 268 is all we're going to get. Which I say all, but considering this is the first car from the 70s on the series, that is still a pretty good showing. And uh, yeah, I know it's this is technically a race, racing car and the like. It's not a road car, but I never set any limitations on whether or not we should be uh, using road cars or racing cars. So uh, yeah, 268 mile an hour is mightily impressive. It that means it matches the Mosler MT900S, which I guess you could say is also a racing car, though that is more for the road. Beats the Maserati MC12 Versione Corsa, as well as the Vauxhall VX220 Turbo, Nissan R390 and the Porsche Cayman GTS. Slightly behind the Porsche 911 GT3 RS, as well as the Selene S7 and the Lotus 11. And uh, yet yeah, way off the McLaren P1 from the uh, previous episode. But again, this is a car from the early 70s, so that is still really rather impressive. And uh, yeah, like I said, it's still dealing with its original engine, which, you know, might sound like a uh, bad thing, but it's also, you know, able to get more than 1,200 horsepower as well as do 268 mile an hour. So it's not a half bad engine whatsoever, and it certainly was back in the wasn't that bad either in back in the day. So uh, yeah, upgraded, it's uh, managed to create a phenomenal 
top speed, whereas also having really rather good acceleration coupled with the all-wheel drive that I gave it. So uh, yeah, making this easily one of the fastest accelerating cars we've had on the series. So uh, yeah, it's got plenty going for it, and uh, yeah, if you drive it properly and are able to get used to how it handles, then uh, yeah, you could also uh, have a really good uh, track car or racing car on your hands, not just something that go quick in a, t in, in a straight line. So uh, yeah. Really good car, really impressed by it, and uh, yeah, it has inspired me to see if there are other vehicles like it that we can try out. Nonetheless, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.